Here I am. Hi. Trying to get the perfect elephant selfie. <laughs> I get scared. I'm Dina, and I went to Thailand to explore how travel trends impact local communities. An important disclaimer, I traveled there before coronavirus became a global pandemic. Stay tuned till the end. I'll explain how COVID-19 has changed the situation on the ground there. Anyway, in Thailand, a major draw for visitors has been elephant tourism. You've probably seen it all over your feed. But when you scroll down to the comments, you see call-out culture at its finest. The debate over whether elephant tourism is cruel feels louder now than ever. After pressure from PETA, TripAdvisor decided to stop selling tickets to some elephant attractions. Even Instagram gives you a warning when you search hashtag elephant ride. So travel vloggers and influencers are preaching ethical ways to interact with elephants, and many say no riding whatsoever. Riding elephants is not the best way to interact with elephants. Don't support elephant riding. But are they right? I'm here to take the debate offline and outside the Western echo chamber by getting answers from the people you probably haven't heard from, local ties. How did elephant tourism get so big here? And how is the West changing the industry? No, I don't want the elephant to kiss me. Do it. The elephant wants to kiss me? Yes, yes. I hate you guys. <laughs> Okay, that felt weird, but it's what a lot of tourists do here. Elephants have long occupied a special and rather emotional place in our hearts. All right, you're a beauty. The number of visitors to Thailand more than doubled in the last decade, and these Asian elephants, which by the way are endangered, have been a huge attraction. For a fee, tourists can bathe them, dust them off with palm fronds, get a hug, and even watch them perform. Oh my god. The elephants are straight up painting. I feel weird. More on that later. My team and I decided to check out two different elephant attractions. This first one lets tourists get up close and take as many photos as they want. My cousin came a couple years ago and like got the sickest one you of them. You see the photo and you're like, oh, that's I the place I have there. to go because I need that photo. The staff here says the baby elephants actually respond to the word selfie. Selfie! Selfie! Maybe not. This is Pat. He's part of a group of scientists and experts trying to improve the welfare of captive elephants in the region. So you get near and then say bon. Bon, bon, bon. Didi, didi. Pat runs this farm and is frustrated with the backlash against elephant tourism. People who live in different parts of the world, including in America and Europe, wrongly judge the people who work direct with the elephants. Do you think that a lot of this debate comes down to Westerners not trusting Thais who've been living with these animals for hundreds and hundreds of years? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's thousands and thousands of years that Thailand and Asian people have been having them as a domesticated elephant, probably as long as the Western been having horses. Okay, but why are there so many elephants in tourism? The history background of the elephant in... Oh, hold for elephant. <laughs> <laughs> didi, didi. Pat told me elephants have historically played a huge role in Thai society. They hold religious importance, they were used to fight in wars, for transportation, and most notably were made to work in the logging industry hauling teakwood. But by the 1980s, the country's forests were rapidly decreasing, and in 1989, the government banned logging. Suddenly, elephants and the families that cared for them were left without a job, and thanks to deforestation, had nowhere to go. What happened is, we've been cutting down the tree for the last 400 years, and then one day we tell the elephant, you can go home. But there was no home, and the elephant had been living with people for, for the whole life, so they, they, they're not able to survive by themselves. Some owners had no choice but to take their elephants to the city to perform for money. But there, the elephants risked being electrocuted by wires, hit by cars, and having deadly encounters with humans or other elephants. I understand that ideally everyone, including us, actually loves to see the elephant roam free. Hmm. But since it's not in the case, I would say that the only chance of survival for these elephant is to be here under uh, protection of the elephant guardians. So you're saying like, tourism is the solution. Yes, that's right. But what kind of tourism exactly? Pat says the word sanctuary, which you might know as the ethical option, is a myth. For me, there is no sanctuary in Thailand. That's because to be a true sanctuary, all the elephants would have to roam free without any human interaction, which Pat says is unrealistic. In the last five years, many, many of the elephant places and elephant facility or even the elephant camp has actually 
changed the names to be called Sanctuary. Branding. Branding and to get a positive image. And to get this positive image, some camps now ban riding altogether and sometimes even touching. But according to a new study, the lack of human contact in observation-only camps could ultimately be bad for an elephant's health. People don't want to see elephant being ridden and it's end up that the elephant not walking enough, not exercise enough and being overfed. So I see your visitors here riding the elephants, but everything I've heard from folks in the U.S. is that riding is bad, and even Instagram warns against it. Mm. Actually, is it bad? No. The total weight of both person on the elephant there, it's still less than 5% of the elephant body weight. So carrying person on, on him, yeah. it's just like the way you carry your handbag. If we do it right, we do it correctly, we can actually provide much better health care level to the elephant. What many animal rights activists claim, though, is that elephants have to be abused in order to be this comfortable around people. But Pat and multiple Thai and Western experts we spoke to said that's not true. The elephant knows that we are their guardians. We are the one that protecting them. We can easily train the elephant. We can easily teach the elephant without any kind of punishments. So we're finally going to get to talk to a mahout, and he's up there with his elephant right now. Mahouts are elephant caregivers, and they're traditionally bonded to one elephant at a time. Sawatika. Sawatika. I'm Dina. 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 Dari. Dari, nice to meet you. Nice and this you. is? Beku. Beku. Yeah. Dari has taken care of elephants since he was 12. He's Karin, an ethnic minority originally from Myanmar, known for their elephant handling skills. I'd love to hear about your relationship with Beku. Can you can you show me how you get on her? Hello. Hey. Moon. Soon. Let it. Oh my god. How much have you heard about the controversy in the West regarding riding elephants? Tanda ke chone ta ke chap hadu nu ba do to do ne ha go di lo. Ba do ko man ni chin ba do to do pha si ri ne. Beku seems pretty loved, but what about other elephants in the industry? Remember this? These shows have always been popular across Thailand, but they raise concerns about the elephant's well-being, including among some Thais, and I get it. So I met up with Dr. Im. She's a vet who studies the health of elephants in northern Thailand. Check the color of the mouth. And we can see huh? the teeth of yeah. elephant as well. Where? Oh, there they are. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, no tear. What does it mean if there is a tear? Maybe have a ulcer on the cornea or inflammation. Yeah. Do they cry when they're sad like we do? <laughs> no. They don't cry. <laughs> no, they don't cry. Okay. This little guy, like, he's so talented. He can paint, he can kick a ball, he's athletic. Um, but I don't know how I feel about watching him perform in a show like that. Is that okay? We should not judge anything by our own opinion or just emotion. As a researcher and a scientist, I think we should use science to judge, to solve the problem, and see which kind of work is the best practice for them. So from what you see in this clinic, working with these elephants, they're fine? Yeah. I found the problem only in the over workload or in the high tourist season, something like that. But if we can control those factors, I believe that we can reduce the problem. Dr. Im recommends camps use metal riding saddles rather than heavier wooden ones. What most surprised me was her finding that elephants in observation-only camps have higher stress hormone levels than the elephants that participate in shows or riding. She says that's likely due to the lack of exercise and less time spent with their mahouts. Her finding really seems to highlight just how dependent captive elephants in Thailand have become on humans. But what about bull hooks, the sharp tools mahouts have used for generations? Well, Dr. Im found those sometimes do leave wounds. We have to accept that we have the problem with uh, how well our mahout using hook. Mm. So we need more training of the mahout and use it only in the necessary situation. Dr. Im says pressure from the West has led to improvements in elephant welfare. 
But ultimately, she says science and local research should lead how Thailand regulates its camps. Please understand that Thai people love elephants and we want our elephant to be in the best practice and very good health and welfare. Let's advise and educate the Mahut, the camp owner, how to take care of the elephant to have the better, better welfare. I came to Thailand wondering why so many elephants work in the tourism industry, and I found out it's essentially because they have nowhere else to go. And for people like Pat, it's important to use tourism for conservation, to allow these endangered elephants to breed and thrive. What would happen if elephant tourism went away? I would say the elephant will probably go extinct much sooner. <laughs> Not everything I saw sat well with me. At the end of the day, these are businesses and I only saw a few of them. Still, there's something about elephants that makes us want to post them all over our feed. But we should be careful not to make assumptions or impose our views without considering the complicated world they live in. Hey everyone, obviously a lot has changed in the week since we filmed this video. As you know, coronavirus is now a full-blown pandemic and that's why I'm filming this update at home while sheltering in place. And basically the entire elephant tourism industry that you just saw in this video has come to a screeching halt. There are virtually no tourists and the camps are closed. And so far there's no evidence to suggest that elephants can contract coronavirus, but I still wanted to know how the pandemic is affecting their welfare and the welfare of the people taking care of them. So I reached out to the folks that we met while in Thailand and here are the videos they sent back to me. Well, for those people who actually been demanding for the elephant tourism to be stopped, you got to be very careful of what you wish. Some of the people may take the elephant back to the areas where they may end up doing illegal logging. The people may take the elephant to the street and beg for the money. And once those people give up, who are going to look after the elephant? Yes, we are very worried about our elephant welfare during COVID-19 period. We may find um, poor nutrition or underweight elephants. Elephants will be chained for a long time no activity, no social interaction. Hey guys, thanks for watching and make sure you also check out our next episode filmed in Thailand all about authentic tourism. We're gonna post the whole series in our checked in playlist. And since I know so many of you are at home, you can also watch more of my reporting here on YouTube and also look out for more of AJ Plus's coronavirus coverage.